Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 75 for July 12th, 2021. I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller, and I'd like to welcome you today to a really special installment of Valor Media because we have a guest with us today who is really a very fascinating person, and we're going to be getting a lot of background from her about what brought her to Valor and the role she plays, and maybe most especially the things that she is hoping to pursue as she continues to work here. And our special guest today is Sheila Athey. And Sheila has actually, over the years, had involvement with the Valor Crisis and Training Center several times. Um, She initially came to us in 2014, and she served as a volunteer for several months. She worked in our crisis intervention department as a caseworker. And then she kind of had a little bit of a hiatus there, and then she returned in 2015, did a little bit more volunteering. But the amazing thing was in 2020, after years of not being able to have her here working with us, had the opportunity to bring her back, not just as a volunteer, but as a staff member. And actually on July 13th, it'll be the one year anniversary of Sheila coming to work for us. And she's really been an incredible member of the team. And she has a really extensive background of a lot of ministry experience a lot of varied educational background. But first of all, I just wanted to welcome you, Sheila, and say thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mark, for having me. Absolutely. I am calling today's episode First Responder. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. That's really what Sheila is for the Valor Crisis and Training Center, because she is literally the first point of contact. Can you just tell us a little bit about how you first came to Valor and maybe just kind of touch on the experiences that you had with, you, you've done a lot of different things with ministry and, and just uh, works of helps. And I just wanted to kind of get sure. some background. Okay. Um, it was 2014. I was running as guest services coordinator slash hostess for Project Big Love in Franklin County, Pennsylvania. And I happened to meet up on Lori Smith, who used to work here. And we were just talking one day about kind of what we envision in life, how to help people. And I have no idea how we got into the conversation, but it was basically that I said, well, I had always envisioned a place where it could help people who were homeless, could give resources for things in the community that would benefit them, a place that would provide education, things that would help people get a leg up instead of keeping them down in their circumstances. So she's like, oh, I have this great place for you to come to. And so I came to Valor in 2014, I think it was October, and I volunteered for several months. And then I left to go pursue ministry and church and just different things that I was doing at the time. And then I eventually came back to Valor when I heard from Lori Riston in 2015 to help fill in for a previous um, employee of Valor. And I stayed for a few months and then I segued back into church ministry. And then last year I went out of ministry at church to take a kind of sabbatical and get a rest because I was always so busy into everything all the time. And I wasn't really sure what my next direction was, but I was on the way to vacation one weekend and Lori sent me a message on Facebook and, hi, I have this position. I'm wondering if you'd be interested. And so I got back in touch. I came into the office and saw her and I started with the next few weeks after that. And I've been here almost a year. And it's really been a great year because Sheila has, from day one, really been a significant contributor to everything that we're doing. And I've always felt sorry for her because she started at probably the most challenging moment because we reopened in July of last year after having been closed for about three and a half months because of the pandemic. We were still operating remotely, but that was a challenge in itself. And if you are a regular listener to Valor Media, you know, we've talked about some of the growth experience that was for the organization as we learned how to do things remotely and learned how to use new technology. And so Sheila actually began her uh, stint here at Valor on one weekend, I guess, to us reopening. We had reopened the week before, and we were trying to figure out all the protocols and all the changes and just trying to kind of get our sea legs again after having been away for a couple of months. So she had an awful lot to learn in a really short time. 
But as I always tell her, she made herself indispensable after the first day, and I told her, you're not going anywhere. So uh, she's just continued to be very involved and you know, very interactive in all the processes here at Valor. And um, I did want to ask, Sheila, you know, beyond your previous experience here and beyond the other experiences that you've had with ministry and, and serving in churches, you also have a really impressive educational background. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I have a bachelor's in psychology from Liberty University, as well as a master's in human services with a concentration in marriage and family therapy from Liberty University. And that's one of the things that Sheila brought to Valor because we generally haven't had staff with that kind of educational background. So she not only brings a lot of practical ministry experience, but just having that educational background has really been beneficial because one of the things that I am always impressed by with Sheila is that she has a really good ability to get kind of like a high-level overview of things, and she can spot if something is like, wow, this is a mess, we need to look at this. She's really good at spotting that, and I just feel like she understands how things work together, and if there's a missing piece or if there's something in there that shouldn't be there, she picks up on that really quickly. So I really appreciate that in just everything that you bring to your job because that really helps us. So like I said, Sheila started at a time last year when things were really hectic and we were facing a lot of new challenges. It's a whole new year. I mean, here we are. You've, you've been with us now for a year. Any thoughts on what this first year has been like? Um, it's been different. <laughs> it's definitely been new, um, busy, exciting for me. Um, it's been a different season of life to come into after being very ingrained and involved in church ministry for about the last eight to ten years. And so it's in some respects like church ministry, but in other respects, it's completely separate from that. So it's it's been a definite interesting experience, but I love it here. Um, I love working here, getting to know everyone that comes in and out. So I'm definitely a people person. So that's one thing that I like is to interact with everyone that we get to help out. So <laughs> No, that's fantastic. Well, I think one of the things that I know Sheila discovered from day one is that everything here is subject to change within five minutes because <laughs> not that we don't try to keep things very detailed and we are very stringent about having processes and policies because we want to be consistent, but we also try to be flexible. And that's one of the things in a social services setting needs change all the time and you still have to be true to what the mission of the organization is and what the vision of what you're trying to accomplish with the ministry because as I always say we are a business but we're also a ministry and Valor Ministries is really about sharing with people not just how to get out of crisis but to really share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people in a way that's relevant and that really connects to daily living and I think that's something that Sheila does really well because She's usually encountering people who are probably at their worst, and she is, uh, I called this episode First Responder because she is Valor's first responder, and she is the person who will field an inbound phone call, who will answer someone ringing the main buzzer at the front door. It could be somebody who's just walking by, doesn't even know what Valor is, sees the sign and comes and starts asking questions. And... I feel like the job that she has is probably the most complicated one in the entire organization because she, most of the time operating completely solo, has to, in a very short amount of time, figure out what someone's need is, whether or not Valor can even assist them with the need, and she also has to really deal with the complexity of separating the person's emotional responses from the facts and the figures of whatever it is that they're dealing with. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Because you make it look easy, and I know it's anything but easy, but what, what kind of experience is that every day, having to catch someone and decipher it? I mean, lots of times people will call and they're, they're very much in a negative state frame of mind because they're so upset that their circumstances sometimes are just extremely overwhelming to them and they're not really sure 
what to do or where to turn so they'll call and I'll answer and I'm like hello this is Sheila this is Valor how can I help you today and they will immediately go in to everything that's going on and I have to kind of pull them back in so to speak kind of like rein them back in to kind of say so exactly you know what is it that you feel that we can help you with and how can we best serve you and so sometimes they're they're just keep, they keep telling you their story so sometimes you'll be on the phone with people for five minutes and sometimes you'll be on the phone with people for 15 minutes or longer while you listen to their story so I always try to have an empathetic ear to listen to them but also at the same time to hi we need to pull it back in so then they'll tell me what their immediate need is and if I ascertain that we cannot help them in that I'm always trying to offer them another avenue that we could potentially service them in so it's kind of like trying to understand dynamics of people's situation which is where my counseling education background I think has come in a whole lot here for helping is because I learned that while I was doing all my classes is that it's an observation thing so when people are in the office I feel like I'm a really good observer of their situations and how they interact with each other if it's a family that comes in here or how they interact with the case manager and even myself sometimes and then beyond that if you're over the phone with them you kind of have to really listen like not just listen mm -hmm. to listen but you have to really listen with your heart not your ears to try to figure out what's happening in their situation and offer them the best course of action to take no that's really good yeah. <laughs> you really are in the hot seat out there and um, you know, I, I don't know in this recording, maybe in the background, you might hear people talking and phones ringing and it can get really chaotic where Sheila sits. And one of the things I always stress, her job title is client navigator. And I don't ever want anybody to misconstrue that she's the receptionist because it's so much more complex and nuanced and has a lot of little tendrils that come off and everything that you were just describing. I mean, it's a lot more than just answering phones. It's this making these very quick judgment calls. A lot of times, if it's somebody who's looking for financial assistance, you have to decide in a very short time span, usually with limited information, whether or not they're even potentially eligible. And that's a real challenge. Yeah, it, it definitely can be. And it's when I first took the job and Lori was explaining what it was, uh, I kind of went into that mindset of it's just going to be a receptionist. Well, I have to tell you in a year that I've been here, it is not just quote unquote a receptionist type position that you might find in in a doctor's office or some kind of other business but it is definitely a little bit of everything to help all kinds of people with whatever their needs might be so <laughs> yeah it's, i always kind of liken it to you know that when someone comes into valor it's sort of like the er and you're sort of like the triage nurse yeah that, that, that's <laughs> a good analogy like, that's to the, it the only way to put it because because you have to kind of decipher right yeah. away like or you know is this like a a gaping wound or is this like a band-aid wound yes or? yes yes you know how can you know is how in depth is the problem that you're bringing into the office you know so is there a little bit that we can help you with or how far into your crisis you know are we going to find both ourselves and our agency and you to figure out how to best help in that situation because we might not be the right people to help someone we might have to right. pro you know, refer them somewhere else. So, and we do that. So I right. think, I think it works out well. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, for anybody who's a regular listener to Valor Media, you know that the core mission of Valor Ministries isn't just about handing money to people, but we really believe that, especially by just sharing the relevant truth of Jesus Christ and of the gospel and what those scriptural truths are, we really want to show people that you can make different life choices, and we're not trying to cram Christianity down anybody's throat, but truth is truth, and these are all sound principles, and we've talked about that a lot. That, that kind of permeates our life skills classes, just all the different things that we do here. And one of the things with Sheila, because I, I get to observe a lot of her interaction with people, and I think that she really is very skillful at sharing the gospel without being overt about it. And, you know, she's she's being very Christ-like with people who, again, might be at their worst. And so can you, like, do you ever have situations where 
you you kind of feel yourself really going into ministry mode because you recognize this isn't just a crisis interchange here. Um, but yeah. almost, almost definitely, since I've been here in the last year, we've had people come, um, and, and they're really hurting because you know even if it's a financial situation that they can't help themselves out and they're looking to other resources to help them some people's pride gets in the way so they don't want to have to go to those places but then they also realize on the opposite of that that they don't really have much of an other choice if they're going to be able to get help and kind of get themselves out of crisis that they're in but we've had several people to walk through the door that um I can just kind of tell through like that observation skill that I have that they're really hurting and they're really in a you know bad negative state of mind and they're not really sure what to do where to go and you'll see people who will they look like they're at their wits end or they'll just start crying so I think I like to think that I have a big heart and that I'm I'm there for people whenever they need it and then back off when they don't want it. So I've been able to kind of sit out in the waiting room with people and just talk to them and pray with them a little bit and, you know, just let them know that nothing is beyond hope, that there's no hopeless situation, that even though it feels like it in that moment, that it will get better. And so I think that I've been able to, in that non-conspicuous maybe pushy way that you know some people might perceive christians as is that i've kind of been able to like be there you know and not be pushy about you know (laughs) letting letting them know that we're here and that we're here not just to help them financially with their crisis but we're also here to help them on an emotional and spiritual level well i think one of the things that goes along with that is kind of also looking at some new roles that you will be taking on here at Valor. And one of the things that's really exciting just across the organization is we've recently rolled out our personal development coaching program. And that's really an extension of everything that we're already doing with crisis intervention and life development classes. But it's a lot more hands-on. It's a lot more tailored to the individual. And the goal is to really come alongside someone. It may involve spiritual mentoring, but a lot of it is just kind of helping people to identify behaviors that are influencing the decisions that they make and really trying to work toward productive goal setting. And that's an area that Sheila is going to be involved in. And she's already doing a lot of that just in the interactions that she talked about. But can you share any thoughts with, like, what would you see your role in personal development coaching, what kind of things would you like to bring as you interact with clients? And just kind of just showing them, you know, how choices impact the things that happen to us in life and how making better choices can benefit us in better ways. And then kind of helping them to keep a mindset of if I do this, if I go for this goal or I can achieve this, then I can do the next thing. And if I can do that thing, then I can do the thing after that. I have a lot of counseling education, though we're not counselors here at Valor. I can also use that to kind of see what's going on and kind of say, hey, let's go from it from this perspective. And if I can't help you, then I get you connected to people who can help you. Well, on top of all of the other talents and skills and educational background that Sheila has, she's also a great writer. And she's really passionate about writing and really emoting things in prose. And one of the really exciting things that she has just recently started to do is to write a blog on the Valor Ministries webpage. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what that means to you? <laughs> so I I can talk. I can talk a lot. Um I am from the South. I'm a very social person, but I am also that person who can get nervous interacting if I have to speak in front of a lot of people. So my outlet is in writing. So I write a lot of things, things going on in life, life experiences, stuff that has happened to me and situations that I have found myself in through life. And then kind of go into that, how God has seen me through, how he has helped, how prayer helps, how faith helps, um, the hope that we have, how those things kind of interact and tie into each other, how they can help you overcome whatever situation you might find yourself in. So my outlet is in writing, and I hope that it inspires people 
to kind of see like, hey, she was in this place, but with this, she's in a better place. So I, I mean, I can talk to you any day, <laughs> any time, but if you read the things that I write, I think I would like for you to see that even though I might have had a bad situation to occur in life, that through prayer, through counsel, just having faith that things get better, that they do get better. And that I kind of would want you to see that even though there might have been something not so good going on, that the outcome became good. And that's how we, yeah, that's how we keep going every day. So this is airing on July 12th. So tomorrow will be the one year anniversary of you starting at Valor. Where do you see yourself at Valor a year from today? Um, I think I'll probably still be doing Client Navigator uh, because I have expressed that I really do like to do that, that I like interacting with people. But I also will be doing some case management and kind of getting more on that side of things and then doing personal development coaching is what I foresee happening. (laughs) And I think that I would like to be able to work um, a lot with women who are victims of trauma. And I think that we see that in our office anyway, as it is right now, people coming in, uh, single moms, divorced moms, widows, you know, those kind of people who have had something happen to them in life that has caused some kind of trauma. So I foresee all those happening along with the current role that I have. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, any closing thoughts, any any final words about your time here or what you... Well, I want to say to people that I understand um, where you're coming from when you're in a financial crisis. That several years ago, before I came to Valor, that my husband and I found ourselves in a similar situation. We had a really rough year that year. He was working for the um, federal government and they went on sequestration and then they shut down for a while. So he lost a lot of income over the course of several months. And we always say that everybody's just one paycheck away from something happening to them. And we were those people at one time. So I empathize with the clients who come in here who find themselves in a situation where everything was going good at one moment, then all of a sudden it wasn't. So I would want people to understand that we all walk a similar path in life. And if you're not in a crisis currently, you will eventually find yourself in one. Nobody escapes one. So I just would want people to know that I'm here to help you and to do the best that I can along with everybody else who works in our office. No, those are really good points to remember, and maybe that describes you. Maybe you're at a place right now where you are in crisis, and that could be anything. It could be financial. It could be something that just blindsided you, and you literally don't know where to go from here. If you find yourself in a situation like that, please reach out to us. You can contact us at info at thevalorcenter.org, and someone from our staff, probably Sheila, will get back in touch with you. And we can begin to help you kind of unravel where you are, and we'll try to determine ways that we can come alongside of you, ways that we can connect you with other resources or referral information. And if you're in a place of crisis and you're looking for a really good resource, our executive director, Lori Riston, recently published a book, You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving. You can find it on Amazon.com or go to www.thevalorcenter.org slash products. We really want the Valor Media Podcast to be beneficial to you. We want to talk about things that impact you. So if you have ideas for subjects that you'd like for us to discuss in future installments, or if you have questions about anything we talked about today or in previous episodes, please contact us at media at thevalorcenter.org. And as Sheila was saying, there are a lot of things that go on here at Valor. We really try to impact people's lives in a powerful way. I encourage you to learn more about what Valor is all about. You can visit our Facebook page, Valor Ministries, and our sister Facebook page, Valor XL, or check out the websites www.thevalorcenter.org and www.valorxl.com. And if this podcast is an encouragement to you, please like and subscribe to it. We do publish new episodes each Monday. And if we're blessing you, would you consider blessing us? Would you financially assist us so that we can continue to bring you this kind of content? If so, you can make your tax-deductible donation securely online 
by going to www.thevalorcenter.org and click on the Donate button. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. Well, Sheila, I'd like to thank you again for joining me today. It was really good insight, and we really appreciate everything that you contribute to the team. Thank you very much, Mark. You're, you're welcome. And I invite you to join us again next week for another installment of Valor Media. And until then, remember this, you were made to thrive. <laughs>